Welcome back once again, all of my low carb friends. And for those of you who are here for the first time, welcome. Today, I have another very easy keto dessert recipe for you. Today, we are going to make keto whoopie pies. Now, if you don't know what a whoopie pie is, basically it's two mini cakes that are stacked on top of each other with a layer of some kind of creamy filling in between the two cakes. It can be any filling you want. I am going to show you how to make a marshmallow based filling for this. But as I said, you can do any filling you want in between these two little cakes to make your own creative whoopie pie. And if you want a printable version of this recipe, you can check out my website at JanetsDeliciousLowCarbKitchen.com. You can find a printable version of this recipe and other goodies there for you. And if you're new to the channel and you want to see lots of easy, delicious, low-carb keto recipes, make sure you click that subscribe button and click the notification bell that's right next to the subscribe button. That way you can be notified every time I put out videos every Wednesday and Saturday. And if you'd like to help support the channel, make sure you scroll down in the description of the video. You'll see some affiliate links. Anytime you purchase anything using those affiliate links, a small portion of your purchase would go to me and help support the channel. So while you do all that, let's get cooking. Preheat your oven to 350 degrees. Line two large baking sheets with parchment paper or silicone baking mats and set them aside for a minute. In a large mixing bowl, combine 112 grams or around one cup of coconut flour, 30 grams or around one fourth cup of cocoa powder, eight grams or around one and a half teaspoons of baking powder, a fourth teaspoon of salt, 133 grams or around two thirds cup of the granulated sweetener of your choice. I'm using granulated monk fruit sweetener. You can use whatever granulated sweetener you want. You can also adjust this more or less depending on how sweet you want your whoopie pies. Sift the dry ingredients all together until everything is fully combined and there are no lumps in the dry ingredients. Add four large room temperature eggs. Make sure they are room temperature so they stir in smoothly. Stir the eggs into the dry ingredients until everything is fully combined and all the dry ingredients are moist. Add a half cup of butter that's been melted and cooled. Make sure it is cooled. You do not want to add hot butter. Stir the butter in until everything is fully combined. Add 120 grams or around a half cup of room temperature plain yogurt or sour cream. Make sure this is room temperature. Room temperature ingredients combine more smoothly. And 9 grams or around 1 and a half teaspoons of vanilla extract. You can adjust this more or less depending on how much of a vanilla hint you want in your whoopie pies. Stir everything all together until everything is fully combined and a smooth, lightly moist dough has formed. Scrape down the sides of the bowl and push the dough to the center of the bowl. Form the dough into a ball. Then massage the dough in your hands just for about 20 to 30 seconds. This is just to make sure you have the right texture in your dough. You want your dough to be lightly moist, but it should not be sticking to your hands. It should be coming together well and holding its shape well. If it feels like it's too dry and chunks of dough are falling off as you are massaging the dough and it seems like it's not holding its shape together, then you need to add just a little bit of room temperature milk or room temperature water just to give it a little bit more moisture. Once you have the right texture, form your dough back into a ball and place it back into your mixing bowl. Then scoop the dough out about one and a half tablespoons at a time onto your prepared baking sheets. Roll each scoop into a smooth ball and place the dough balls back onto the baking sheets. Make sure when you are putting the dough balls onto your baking sheets that you leave about two or three inches of space in between each ball because we are going to need to press these out to a pretty decent size. Press each ball out to a circle that's around two inches in diameter. You can make these whoopie pies whatever size you want. If you want to make them a little bit bigger, you can make them a little bit bigger. If you want to make them a little smaller, you can make a little smaller. It's all up to you. I pretty much make them about the size of a biscuit. So if you have a biscuit cutter and want to kind of use that as your measuring device, just make sure that your circles are relatively close to the same size so that when you go to stack the cakes over the filling, you'll have an even whoopie pie and one side won't be 
wider than the other. Once the cakes are all pressed out to your desired size, place them in your preheated oven and bake at 350 degrees for 10 to 12 minutes or until they're slightly darkened. Once the cakes are done baking, remove them from the oven. Allow them to cool on the pan for at least 10 minutes so that they can firm up a little bit. After 10 minutes and the cakes have firmed up a little bit, transfer them to a wire rack and allow them to cool completely before filling them. While they're cooling, we're going to make the filling. For the filling, in a large mixer bowl, place 3 fourths cup of very soft room temperature butter. You want this to be very soft but not melted. Just make sure it's very soft. Beat the butter on low for about 10 seconds or just until it starts breaking up a little bit. Then increase your speed to medium and beat on medium for about 45 seconds to a minute or until the butter is smooth. Scrape down the sides of the bowl and push the butter to the center of the bowl. Add 96 grams or around one cup of the keto marshmallow fluff or marshmallow cream of your choice. I'll leave a link in the description to my keto marshmallow cream, which is what I used for this recipe. Add 12 grams or around two teaspoons of vanilla extract. You can adjust this more or less depending on how much of a vanilla hint you want in your filling. You can also change the extract if you want a different flavor rather than vanilla in your filling. Beat on low for about 10 seconds or just until the marshmallow fluff and the butter start combining. Then increase the speed to medium and beat on medium for another 45 seconds to a minute or until everything is fully combined and you have a smooth mixture. Scrape down the sides of the bowl and push the mixture to the center of the bowl. Turn the mixer onto low and gradually add in about 130 grams or around one cup of the powdered sweetener of your choice. I'm using powdered monk fruit allulose blend. You can use whatever powdered sweetener you want. Just make sure when you are adding this, you are adding it in small amounts and letting it beat in as you are adding it. If you need to, you can stop the mixer and scrape down the sides as needed. Once the sweetener is fully added, Scrape down the sides of the bowl and push everything to the center of the bowl. Then beat on medium for another 30 seconds to make sure everything is fully combined and completely smooth. Then set that aside for just a minute. To assemble the whoopie pies, take half of the cooled cakes and turn them upside down to where the flat side is on top. Then scoop about two tablespoons of the filling in the center of each one of the upside down cakes. Then take a plain cake and place the flat side down over the filling and very gently press the cakes together until the filling spreads out to the edges of the cakes. Be very careful when you are pushing these together. You don't want to break your cakes. You also don't want to overfill the filling where it's gushing out of the side. You just want it to reach the edges of the cakes. Now remember, you can use any filling you want in these whoopie pies. You can use a buttercream filling, a chocolate filling, a cream cheese filling, whatever. As long as it's a nice, soft, creamy filling, whatever filling you want to put in there, that is up to you. Once your whoopie pies are all assembled, you can eat them immediately. If you do have any leftovers, store them in an airtight container in your refrigerator for up to five days. Eat and enjoy. And that's our recipe of the day. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did and you want to see more videos like this, make sure you click that thumbs up like button, click that subscribe button, leave me a comment if you want to. Let me know if there's any recipes that you'd like to learn how to make and I'll do what I can to get those out there for you. And as always, keep cooking.